I appreciate you taking time to join us this morning and uh, talk to us about this piece that you wrote, uh, Matus. I am, I am just blown away about this this piece because it looks like this cool combination between history and fun. But you wrote the article. What is Chicago Game Space? Yeah, um, Chicago Game Space. Uh, it's curated by Jonathan Kinkley. He's the co-founder and former executive director of Video Game Art Gallery. It's a Chicago-based nonprofit here. Uh, they basically do a lot of different events surrounding and different like video game arts and uh, media. I think some of the interactive events they've had recently were, I want to say uh, one was like a VR event. I don't exactly remember the title of the event itself, but I think Kinkley left around May and then he decided to go on his own venture with this private space. So. It's basically a private curated collection that he made himself. Uh, right now, there's only two exhibits, but they include the cyberpunk artwork exhibit that he has, which is with Cook and Becker. And there's some curated pieces there and also pieces from the video game developers, uh, CD Projekt Red. And the other half of it is the video game history collection, which basically consists of, you know, not a lot of games, but basically milestones in video game history that you know kinkley thinks to himself are you know important in telling the story of video games and also you know i guess how big video games got in the last 60 or 50 years so some of those things include like the odyssey um i'm trying to think <laughs> he's got multiple game candidates too so there's like mortal kombat 2 pa or yeah pac-man space invaders he also had playable collections on like the NES, NES classic, the Sega Genesis classic. Um, but yeah, like he's basically making this like curated private collection where, you know, you walk through it with him and he kind of takes you point by point as you kind of sort of walk through history and also at certain points get to play through history. So yeah, it's a, it's really just like a fun experience that, you know, especially right now with COVID it's, you know, accessible to people. I think he said uh, when you do an appointment, it's up to five people in a group. So, and, you know, he has you required wearing masks and gloves if you're playing the games itself. So everything's really, you know, safe within the COVID precautions. And it's, you know, even with it being only five people, it's kind of fun because, you know, you have these private conversations, or I should say not private, but you have these conversations with them basically that, you know, even when you stop from like, start from the odyssey and onto like mortal Kombat or space invaders you know you kind of stop a little bit and you have that conversation or something comes into your head like i think one of the things that came up to us was when we when i mentioned the video game doc on netflix high score which uh, surprisingly enough I, I i think it lined up perfectly which i, I kind of noticed right off the bat with the odyssey and space invaders and how i was kind of walking along but that documentary almost lines perfectly with the collection itself where you kind of like hit these kind of heavy hitters and big moments in video game history. So you kind of give us uh, some inside Matus about who Kinkley is, right? Mm -hmm. So I told you my hypothesis from the outside looking in is this thing looked like a combination between history and fun. And in the first hour I made this comment, if you're going to have a gallery about mm -hmm. video games, inherently video games want you to interact with them. So how does Kinkley capture history in fun? It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Ready Player One's Architect, right? Uh, I'm not too familiar with that, but I mean, yeah, like with the fun aspect, I mean, it, it's just, I mean, obviously everyone could be playing video games at home, which is kind of a big thing that, you know, it's like right out there. But I think with this especially, it's, you know, with the, playable titles that you can play like on the nes and the sega and all those kind of different little consoles i mean it, it's just something that kind of like breaks the momentum of regular kind of history collection or art gallery i mean i think one of the things that kinkley kind of perfectly said to me or he said in our interview was that you know video games encapsulate a bunch of different mediums into one so you're not really missing out when you're playing or when you're looking at something because I personally feel like when you're playing a video game, you're being exposed to multiple different aspects of it. So when you're either stopping and playing Oregon Trail or, you know, Super Mario Bros. or Sonic on the Sega, I mean, these kind of like little tiny moments where you get to stop, play, and then kind of like move along and then 
you know, even compare them, like when you go from Oregon Trail or Space Invaders and then you start playing something off the Sega or even on the PlayStation 1, you know, something that I'm more familiar with versus something that I was never exposed to as a kid, I kind of get that idea of like, oh, like you kind of get that difference in feel and also see like how it's kind of evolved either, you know, despite the fact that they're not made by the same people, but you can see that evolution even play through it. Matuz Janik joining us on Gaming Morning Show talking about this piece written for uh, the Columbia College Chicago Chronicle. Uh, Columbia Chronicle is, I believe, the correct term. You can reach uh, him via Twitter and we'll post that. In fact, I think we just did in the chat um, if you have any information that you want to pass along. Student reporter, because I look like, look like class of 21, correct? So yeah. what are some of your goals and aspirations is writing about the video game industry something you want to do long term? Well, I mean, I definitely think it's something that I would want to do. But I mean, as with a lot of things right now, especially during the pandemic, I'm just trying to look for a job after I graduate or something, you know, something stable. <laughs> I mean, even like in the Midwest and in Chicago, I mean, video games as a whole may not be as big as like on the East and West Coast. But I mean, there are places out here that do make it, you know, more accessible and, you know, more prominent. Like I think there's some organizations out there like Sugar Gamers and I think there's also another one that's skipping my mind. But, you know, I feel like Chicago in itself can be a big media hub for video games, which I mean, I'd like to see in a few, maybe next five years if that happens. But yeah, I mean, right now just finding a job and then hopefully later down the line I could find myself maybe aligning with a news outlet that, you know, provides that kind of source of entertainment or, excuse me, source of news. I mean, I know that the Washington Post has the launcher and, like, Bloomberg News just got Jason Schreier. So you, you do see these people getting, like, you know, spread across different places and different outlets. So that's nice to see, but I don't know how big it would be or how large that pool will get later down the line. Well, you mentioned the pandemic, and I yeah. can't imagine being a college student uh, in this time. You know, we came out of school more closer to the the recession, the the Great Recession, and so everyone says this this thing about you know once in a lifetime this and once in a lifetime that. But if we can ever help you out in any way, you see someone in the Pacific Northwest that you want to to meet, you know, definitely reach out to us. But I will tell you the fact that you're a student writer was really exciting because that's one of our hopes is to have many student writers on the show and have a chance to display some of their talent really like the piece about chicago game space and we've retweeted it numerous times but you can find matuz on twitter m janik 99 or as i mentioned cc chronicle on twitter uh thanks so much for joining us to tell us about this cool place watch ready player one if you <laughs> haven't already because i think It'll remind you of what I think Kinkley's doing with this this space, um, but certainly appreciate taking the time to join us, and, and best of luck. If we can help you out, let us know. No, definitely. Thank you again for having me, man. Been, Absolutely. Yeah, that was yeah, a lot of fun. Matuz Janik right. joining us on Gaming Morning Show. Uh, yeah, that was a, a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't had a chance to have as many student writers yet on the show as I would hope, and that's something that you know I remember as a, a student broadcaster. The opportunity to come on to shows and have a chance just to talk about sports was huge, making those connections and those kind of things. So I uh, certainly hope that that's the case uh, going forward for Matus. I'm Ryan. Thanks for being with us on Gaming Morning Show. It is now 7.35. If you missed any of our interview with Matus and uh, you have – more intrigue into the Chicago game space, be sure to go to chicagogamespace.com. I didn't have it up quickly, and that was one thing I forgot in my prep, is to have these pictures ready to go. But you can see how this is that combination of art gallery and video games. I love that picture right there. That's from chicagogamespace.com. And uh, Vicky Lee. Oh, no, actually, I think that was Vicky Lee who, who made that for ColumbiaChronicle.com. So you, you have the sources to get to where you want to go, and I did paste uh, the interview information in our chat. So be sure to connect with Matus and the Columbia College Chicago Chronicle, uh, class of 2021. That was a lot of fun. I had, I had a good time talking about uh, that and then 